Claisen condensation reaction is going to be the topic in this lesson, and we'll see some similarities to aldol reactions. So in the aldol, we had an enolate or enol attacking a ketone or an aldehyde. Well, in the Claisen reaction, they're only base catalyzed, so you're only going to be dealing with an enolate as the nucleophile, and they'll be attacking an ester. And whereas when you attack a ketone or aldehyde, you're doing nucleophilic addition, when you attack an ester, you're doing nucleophilic acyl substitution. So a little bit different in your products as well. So in the aldol, you get a conjugated enone. So but in the clays in here, you're going to see a beta dicarbonyl as your product, and that's how you'll kind of distinguish between the two. Uh, we'll deal with stealth clays and condensations, mixed or crossed clays and condensations, and then we're going to deal with an intramolecular clays and condensation as well, often referred to as the Diekmann condensation. Now, this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so as I mentioned in the intro here, so the clays and condensation is only ever going to be base catalyzed, but you've got to be very careful on what you choose for your base. So here uh, I've got ethyl propanoate here. Uh, and in this case, we've got to be very choosy on our base. We can't just pick any old base. So like, for instance, like let's just say we decided to try and do this with hydroxide. Well, we learned that hydroxide will do basic hydrolysis of a carboxylic acid derivative like an ester here. And it would actually just first convert the, replace the OET with an OH, be a carboxylic acid, but under basic conditions that gets deprotonated and this would turn into a carboxylate. And that's not what we're trying to do here. So we can't use hydroxide as a base. So that's not gonna work. So let's say we tried to use methoxide as our base instead and that's strong base there as well. Well, we also learned that if you use an alkoxide with an ester once again, you do transesterification. You'll place the OET now with an O ME, and that's going to cause a problem. Now, the truth is, though, we're, we're trying to form an enolate here. We're trying to deprotonate that alpha carbon, and you can use LDA. That is an option, and we'll see uh, that's our major strategy here when we're doing mixed or crossed clays and condensations. So, but what you're most commonly going to see then, so since any strong base except something bulky like LDA is likely to do nucleophilic acyl substitution in addition to being able to form the enolate and deprotonate that alpha hydrogen. So what you want to do then to use your base is to do something that when it does nucleophilic acyl substitution doesn't change your compound. Well, as a result, then the only thing you can really use is whatever leaving group you already have for your ester. And so in this case, we're going to use ethoxide. So, so there we go. So if you've got so uh, an ester here like ethyl propanoate, then you want to use ethoxide like sodium or potassium ethoxide as your base. That way you don't have to worry about nucleophilic acyl substitution giving you some mixture of different uh, results and stuff like this. So uh, in this case, then you're going to form your, well, you know, what? let's work out the whole mechanism here. In fact, we'll just do it down below. So first thing, you're going to deprotonate that alpha carbon. And you know what? I'm not going to work out the complete mechanism, but give you enough so you can see what's going on here. So we're going to form this enolate, and I'm only showing that minor resonance contributor. So, and then that's going to react with your second equivalent of your ester. And a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So we're going to come in here, push those electrons up, get our tetrahedral intermediate. So there's our alpha carbon of the nucleophilic one. It has one additional carbon right there. So it's one, two, three carbons. Here's the new carbon carbon bond we have made. So but because we have a leaving group, we're gonna do nucleophilic substitution instead of just nucleophilic addition like we did with the aldol. So these electrons come right back down and kick off that ethoxy group. And maybe it's easier if I draw this for a sec. So. So this was the nucleophilic molecule, and it's just replacing the leaving group right from this alpha carbon with the product here. And so we're going to get that new bond right there. So we're forming a carbon-carbon bond. So, and it turns out this is the final product, except the reaction's not 
done yet. And that's a little confusing. So, but it is the final product. However, this thing's formed under highly basic conditions. And you gotta realize that this alpha carbon right here is now alpha to two carbonyls. And if you recall, when you've got a beta dicarbonyl like this, the alpha carbon is exceptionally acidic with a pKa probably in the nine range or so, something like that. And so in a solution that's highly basic, like with sodium methoxide, it's going to get deprotonated. You can't stop it. And so in this case, you're gonna have another ethoxide molecule come and deprotonate. So, and I'm only showing this run one resonant structure, but this is an enolate itself, resonant stabilized with both oxygens. And that's why when you're doing a Claisen condensation, you've got to add H3O plus in step two, because the moment you form your product, it's under basic conditions and it gets deprotonated immediately. And you just simply want to reprotonate it here. And that's why we're adding the H3O plus. Cool, and there is your final product. All right, so here we're doing our mixed clays, and with our mixed clays, you really gotta use LDA, because if you just use like sodium methoxide or methoxide, if you got a methyl ester or something along those lines, you're always gonna get only a very small amount of your enolate formed and still have a lot of that ester left over, where is if we use LDA, once again, we're gonna 100% convert the whatever ester you're using to an enolate. And so in this case, that's gonna be this first one here. It's gonna be 100% deprotonated at that alpha carbon to form the enolate. And that enolate then is the only nucleophile present and it's present 100% conversion with LDA. And then we're gonna react it with this guy in its place. So, and if we take a look here, we can draw that lovely ester out if we're trying to predict products and then erase your leaving group. That leaving group's gone, and in its place is going to be an alpha carbon that you're bonding it to. In that case, that's this alpha carbon. That was the nucleophilic species, because it's this one that comes around and does the nucleophilic attack, pushing the electrons up, but they'll come right back down and kick off the leaving group. And again, I'm not super interested in showing the entire mechanism here, but I do want to show you how you predict those products. And so I want to draw this carbon as the alpha carbon. Well, that alpha carbon, So it's still bonded to this group, but it's also bonded to two additional carbons right here that I'll just draw off to the side. And so in this case, we're gonna form a new carbon-carbon bond between this alpha carbon and that carbonyl. And that's the last thing I'm drawing right here. And again, as soon as this thing forms, it gets deprotonated uh, under the highly basic conditions, but we add H3O plus to reprotonate it. And this is your final product here uh, in this mixed or crossed Claisen condensation. Let's take a look at an intramolecular version as well called the Diekmann condensation. All right, so this is the Diekmann condensation. We're gonna need a diester in this case. In our Diekmann condensation, this might as well have just been called an intramolecular uh, Claisen condensation. So notice for the aldol, we didn't call the intramolecular aldol somebody's reaction, but so somebody pioneered this, I'm guessing a guy named Diekmann. Uh, and so he gets the name, but this is nothing more than an intramolecular Claisen condensation. And if we kind of envision what's happening here is we are going to deprotonate one of these alpha carbons with this being, thing being symmetrical. It doesn't matter which you choose. Now, if it had not been symmetrical, you'd have to consider both versions. You'd have to say, oh, well, if this enolate on this alpha carbon attacks this side, or if this enolate attacks this side. Well, with this being symmetrical, it's the same thing either way. Had it not been, though, you'd consider possibly getting two products. And so in this case, we're gonna form that enolate on either side, and he's gonna come and attack over here. And he's gonna kick those electrons up, but just keep in mind those electrons do come right back down and kick the leaving group off. So I'm not showing the whole mechanism combining steps. This is horrible from an arrow pushing standpoint, but again, just trying to predict the product here. And what might be helpful is I like numbering the carbons that form the new ring. So if I make this like say number one, two, three, four, five, six, it's gonna form a six-membered ring. And like the intramolecular aldol, it turns out for an intramolecular clasin, five and six-membered rings are the most likely ones to form. In fact, other size rings aren't so common to form. So if it can form a five or six-membered ring, you should definitely predict that as a possible product when you've got a diester like this under basic conditions. So, well, in this case, we've got a methyl ester. And so the appropriate base to use here would be sodium or potassium methoxide. 
So, and then once again, to finish off that clays, and we'll still have to acidify the solution. All right, so in this case, we can see we're gonna form that six-membered ring. So I'm gonna start just by forming a six-membered ring. So, and then we're gonna number it. And it doesn't really technically matter where we number it. So, but I'm gonna have this guy wrapping around like this. So I'm gonna make the apex at the top still carbon number one up here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we can see that carbon number one is now bonded to carbon number six over here. But carbon number six still has this group attached to it, the ester. And carbon number one, electrons went up to oxygen, give it a negative charge, but they came right back down. Carbon number one also still has a double bond to oxygen. And so we can see this, you know, beta dicarbonyl structure. So in our product, and that's your final product. Again, it would initially get deprotonated right at that alpha carbon, but the H3O plus would reprotonate it to give you this final product back. Cool, and again, one big thing and reminder here, again, when you finish a clays and condensation, you get a beta dicarbonyl. And again, that is fundamentally different than when we finished the aldol and we got that alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde or, or our conjugated enone. And as you see in some circles, it's called. And so you wanna definitely make sure you see the difference in that because when you're dealing with retrosynthesis, which we're gonna deal with at the end of this chapter, if you can recognize if something was built more likely via an aldol versus a clazin, you'll see that difference. And once again, in an aldol, an enol or enolate attacks a ketone or aldehyde. But in the clazin, an enolate attacks an ester instead. It's the electrophile that really defines the reaction. And again, the key was when you attack a ketone or aldehyde, you're doing nucleophilic addition. But when you attack this ester, you're doing nucleophilic acyl substitution. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems on these alpha substitution reactions, if you're looking for my brand new final exam uh, rapid review for OCHEM2, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.